welcome to the High Speed Amplifiers Lab here at Texas Instruments. My name is Dwight Bird, Product Marketing Engineer for Successive Approximation Register Analog to Digital Converters, or SAR ADCs. Hi, and my name is Luke LaPointe, and I'm the Applications Engineer for High Speed Amplifiers. Perfect. Thank you, Luke. What we want to be discussing with you today is a common problem with really high precision SAR ADCs, right around 16 to 18 bits. You have a fully differential front end. How do you drive that? How do you really get data sheet values out of it? So what we want to do with you today is figure out, calculate that correct fully differential amplifier that's needed to drive it, and figure out the RC low pass filter values that you need to obtain. So first, what do you need from the ADS data sheet, or the ADC rather, data sheet? For this one, we use the ADS8321. This is a 16-bit, very precise, high-speed SAR ADC. You need three important parameters, the resolution, the acquisition time, and the sample and holding capacitor value. After you obtain those values from the data sheet, you can put those into, in the design equations to get your preferred unity gain bandwidth needed from your fully differential amplifier, the maximum output referred to impedance for that amplifier, and finally, your RC low-pass filter values needed to select to drive your SAR ADC. Luke, is that all I need or do I need anything else? You know, typically this would be all you would need, but if we're talking about really high performance, really high precision ADCs, you do need to consider some extra factors. These being noise and SNR specifically. In an amplifier, the, the noise is specified as input voltage noise and input current noise in nanovolts per root hertz. We have to do some work to convert this to dB so we can add it to the SNR of the ADC. The SFDR, however, is a little easier. It's given in the data sheet as harmonic distortion. And typically for a fully differential amplifier, the second HD2 is the highest spur that you're going to be dealing with. So once you have that, and of course the filter will also play into account, which we'll look at. So if you have both the SNR and SFDR of the amp and the data converter, you can add them together to get a total system SNR. So typical rule of thumb, because you're using an SFDR linear sum, you'd want to be about you'd want your amplifier to be about 15 dB better than your ADC, and you'd want your SF your SNR to be about 10 dB better because it's an RMS sum. So, one of the parameters that Dwight specified was the gain bandwidth, the unit of gain bandwidth, and the minimum required is four megahertz. So, when we're talking about low power, fully differential amplifiers, we can go down to we have the, the THS 4531, which has a 35 uh, megahertz of bandwidth. When you are looking for the performance metrics in the data sheet, the SNR and SFDR, like I said, they're listed as nanovolts per root hertz and picoamps per root hertz, whereas the SFDR or harmonic distortion is listed as HD2 and HD3. So those are important metrics that you need. Once you have those, those are input referred voltage noise and input referred current noise. You'd want to refer those to the output. And you can do that through this design equation here. You can see that I've modeled a fully differential amplifier and its noise sources. And you can run through the equations and add in your filter, which for a single RC pole is pi over 2 times your cutoff frequency, um, which gives you 100.04. Once you have this, which 100.04 is uh, about 10 dB better than the SNR of the data sheet. So when you have these, because they're an RMS sum, you add them to get a total system SNR of 86.7, whereas the data sheet for the ADC uh, listed as 87 dB, and the SFDR adds as a linear sum, which is 85.9, and the data sheet is listed as 86. So now that we know all this, we, we said that, hey, we got our amplifier to be uh, 10 dB better SNR and, S and 15 dB better SFDR. How do we go about and actually simulate this? What, what can we do to really show that we're getting the performance that we're looking for? Perfect. Thank you, Luke. We found the perfect fully differential amplifier to drive our circuit, the THS 4531. Here we show the two EVMs. First off, the THS4531 EVM is a fully differential amplifier running to the ADS8321 EVM. Now, there are some onboard op amps which we bypass through this circuitry, so that's why you see two EVMs here. 
If we go up to the um, input frequency, we have a function generator generating right around 10 kilohertz, and we have these extra numbers, which uh, Luke will show you uh, why this is later on. This is going through a bandpass filter that has a really narrow uh, band lap, which we actually have to correctly uh, compensate for the transmission loss there. Then we take this and we capture it through the computer. Well, Luke, now that we know that and we have the two EVMs with the uh, function generator, is there anything else important needed to capture? Uh, yeah. Well, now that we have all the equipment set up, everything's ready to go, we have a tool called ADC Pro. And that is actually a free simulation tool. And it allows us to use our data converters and the EVMs to simulate uh, oscilloscopes, get FFT plots, and really evaluate the kind of performance that we're looking for. So why don't I go ahead and launch ADC Pro for you right here. And you can see the interface. We have the ADS8321 selected. And as Dwight mentioned earlier, the frequency is not exactly 10 kilohertz. It is actually 10.02 kilohertz. And that comes about because of the coherent frequency. And there's actually a tool in ADC Pro to calculate the coherent frequency that you need. We're sampling at 100 kilohertz. We desire 10 kilohertz at 8,192 samples. And so the coherent frequency actually gives you a list of, of frequencies, and we chose 10.02 kilohertz. And because of that, and because of our narrow band pass filter, we actually have to compensate for the loss of that filter. And as we've done there, we've, um, we've supplied the signal with uh, a voltage, and we're measuring here on the oscilloscope, we're measuring the output of both the, uh, the negative output and the positive output of the fully differential amplifier. And we want to make sure that it is about minus 0.5 dB down from full scale and compensated correctly. And so you can see on the oscilloscope, they're centered at 2.5 volts and they got a 2.5 volt peak to peak swing. And this is actually correct. So in the time domain, everything looks good. Let's go back over to the frequency domain and see if we can get the kind of performance we looked for. So back into ADC Pro, if we take uh, an acquisition here, we can see that our signal comes up clearly. It's at minus 0.5 dB full scale, which is what we expected. Uh, the SNR is 84.67. The THD is minus 98. The signal to noise ratio plus distortion is 84.48. And the signal, uh, the SFDR is 98.9 dB. Uh, overall, this is the kind of performance that we wanted to get. And the THS4531 has enabled us to drive this ADS8321 converter. Great. Thank you, Luke. So just to conclude, what we showed you today is with a high precision, fully differential type of signal conditioning that you need, there are some complex circuitry and uh, calculations that you need to do to correctly select the right values. After you get them, can you really expect data sheet values? The answer is yes, you can. From here at Texas Instruments, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.